Eight. Saved by the bell. I couldn't let Godzilla eat any more homework. I was very careful. I didn't put Godzilla in my backpack until I took out my homework. I put my papers in a safe place on my toy shelf, where Godzilla couldn't get them. Every morning, I put my homework back pa- back in my pack. I was being very responsible. Things were going great. My plan was working, until Thursday. That's the day I forgot to put my homework back in my backpack before I left for school. When Mr. Morris asked for my math, I didn't tell him Godzilla ate it. I told the truth. I left it at home. I could tell Mr. Morris was not happy. He closed his eyes and counted to five. I missed recess again. It was my turn to wash the dishes that night. Margaret got to watch television. Mom helped me dry the dishes and put them away. That was what we were doing when Margaret stomped into the kitchen. The cable is not working, she said. Now I can't watch my favorite show. Mom looked up a number in the phone book, picked up the phone, and punched in the numbers. She told someone about our cable. Then she was quiet for a while. Are you sure? She finally asked. I see. She said, "I'll have it to you tomorrow." Mom hung up the phone. They didn't get this month's check in the mail. She said. How could you forget to pay the cable bill? Margaret moaned. It's the most important one. I wrote the check, Mom said, and Parker mailed it last week. They were looking at me. I swallowed hard. You did mail that stack of envelopes, didn't you? Mom asked. I nodded. It was not a lie. I did mail a stack of envelopes. You put all of the envelopes in the box, didn't you? She asked. This question was harder to answer, but I was saved by the bell, the telephone bell. Mom put her finger to her lips. We all got very quiet, and she answered the phone. It was not Margaret's boyfriend. The caller was talking to Mom. Margaret stomped out of the kitchen. Mom listened and nodded, saying things like "yes" and "I see." I could tell it was a very serious call. This was my chance. All I had to do was sneak out of the kitchen, get to my bedroom, and wait until everybody forgot about the cable bill. I took two steps. I was almost to the door. I checked over my shoulder. Mom was still listening to the voice on the phone. She didn't look happy. I took another step. Just then, a shadow fell across the kitchen. Dad was standing in front of the door, blocking my way. In one hand was a gobbled-up piece of green paper. I looked closer. It was money, and it had a big number on it. In his other hand was Godzilla.